to Cloud and Queer, the podcast by SADA for innovative business leaders and technology enthusiasts, where we explore how Google Cloud is transforming the industry and what that means to you. Now, here's your host, Tony Safoyan. Through GVC, but in our new studio, a very special guest, Eric Rosencrantz, Director of America's Partnerships. Welcome, Eric. Thanks, Tony. Glad to be here. I'm happy you joined. Um, I've been waiting to get you on for for a long time. We finally uh, made it work. Uh, you and I have known each other for for a long time, actually starting kind of in the Microsoft days. So, do you want to talk about sort of your career trajectory and how you ended up at Google Cloud? Yeah. So, I, I had a phenomenal 15 year experience at Microsoft, um, but at a certain point, uh, I really was enamored with the technology at Google. Um, I didn't really know many of the people here, um, but what drew me was the technology, the R&D investment, the innovation, and I really saw a an emerging uh, set of technical capabilities that uh, didn't really have a business front end on it at scale. Uh, and this is going back three and a half years ago when I joined. And so I saw it as an opportunity to come in and really uh, help scale the, uh, the the outreach to customers, to partners, and really bring the story to more people. And I think we've really done that in the last three and a half years, and it's it's only significantly um, accelerated since I've been here, particularly since Thomas Kirian joined us here uh, about a year ago. Yeah, three and a half years. You are actually one of the early trendsetters to come from, you know, from Microsoft. Um, there's been many, many others since, especially, you know, recently. Um, I have tons of respect for for Microsoft as well, especially Satya and all the work that he's done. Now, how, how do you think uh, the work that you did prior to coming to Google, like what was that work and how do you think it sort of prepared you for, for this journey? Yeah, so I've had the good fortune of working in a variety of disciplines over the course of my career. So I started out as a software developer, um, going back to the early days working for PricewaterhouseCoopers and also working, uh, uh, doing some internships when I was in college. But the, uh, the that work led to an interest in uh, getting over to the business side. And uh, most notably, when I wrote a stored procedure on an Oracle database that had an infinite while loop in it, and it actually took down the production system. So it was time that I joined the business side. Um, so I, I really, but I, I benefited my entire career from those first couple of years uh, being in a deeply technical role. And in fact, um, I, I went back and got my master's in, in data science. And so I'm a practitioner of uh, predictive analytics and in doing things that I've, I've tried to stay somewhat technical uh, over the arc of my career. So I moved from technical to selling services for uh, multiple Microsoft partners. Uh, then I moved to uh, a role at Microsoft where I was leading uh, a very large account. And I did that successfully over a number of years, moved into management there. But at a certain point um, in the early days of Azure, I got really interested in cloud and uh, moved to a more product oriented role, which uh, stretched you know, stretched me in different ways. Um, and really, I had to uh, learn an entire new ecosystem of people in the engineering teams and the marketing teams. Um, and I had a really fun job working on looking at gaps in, in uh, the cloud and enterprise uh, platform at Microsoft at the time and uh, doing big go-to-market deals with ISVs, working very closely with engineering and marketing. Um, and that, that gave me great exposure to how do you prioritize and build products and how do you then create offers that go out to the field that help the organization scale. And that was really, uh, you know, in addition to working with partners when I was in the field, helping design programs that get cascaded to the field and to partners was really a key piece of, of that role as well. And I got to really understand how do you build something that scales to hundreds, if, if not thousands of sellers, and then by extension, thousands or tens of thousands of partners that are out in the field. Uh, so coming to Google, my entry point was really in the channel side, um, which was 
a function that I had practiced through other roles, but this was really my first full-time channel role. And uh, I came here to manage a, a fairly small team in the quote unquote East and really develop the, uh, the, the partner ecosystem and uh, have really enjoyed seeing the success that SADA and other partners have had in the last few years. And uh, it, it is really mind blowing to see the amount of impact we've had so quickly. Um, so I think to sum up from a career perspective, I think the, the biggest asset that I've had has really been uh, the ability to look at the business through different lenses and to learn along the way and, and uh, you know, really bring the best of all those experiences forward. Part of the reason I like to do this is I actually get to learn a lot more about people that I feel like I've known for a long time. So uh, yeah. that that's very helpful. I think just starting on the engineering side and then moving over to the business side, I think that's a great uh, sort of foundation And when you work in technology in general. And I think it's actually relatively rare. So uh, that that's fantastic. And also the fact that you work at partners, you know, like you understand what it's like to be in, in our shoes, playing the role that we play. Um, as I sometimes like to describe as dancing with elephants, you know, <laughs> whether it's Microsoft or Google or Oracle, like if you're a partner with Google, you're kind of like dancing with elephants. For me, the most important thing is really the people. Um, and so if you look at over the arc of time, the technology is always going to change. The, uh, you know, the practices are going to change with the way the, the market changes. Um, and the, the people you partner with uh, likely will, will change over time as well as you know, different internal and external stakeholder groups pop up. Um, but if you can really work well with people and bring your best self forward, uh, that makes a, a major difference. And you know, it's one of, the, one of the fundamentals of partnering in my view. Obviously, we have a perspective. We've certainly felt a lot of changes in the last couple of years, particularly, as you said, when Thomas Kareen came on board. But how have you felt changes in your charter or in your resources and your teams be impacted by, you know, Kara Lee coming on board, Tom, Thomas and Rob? What have you felt from your side? So one thing I talk to the team about all the time is falling in love with impermanence. Um, and that's actually a really positive thing. Uh, you know, whether you talk about individual execs um, coming into role or whether you talk about, you know, the, the advances we're making in technology or, or whether how it's how we tune our practices, uh, impermanence is actually a really good thing. It's a scary thing for many people because, you know, you, there's comfort in doing things the same way and wanting things to remain just as they are. Um, but I think there's also a great comfort in really acknowledging that impermanence is part of the way we move quickly. Um, you know, it's uh, things will not stay the same, even if you want them to. And so I try and work with the team to make sure everybody is staying agile, um, staying open and respectful in their communications. That's a really important thing because, you know, what worked a month ago may not work next month. Um, you, know, you, you see that in the way the market moves so quickly. Uh, so I think as we as we've had new leaders come in, we've tried to maintain that perspective. There is so much we can learn. Um, I learn every single conversation I have with you know Kara Lee or Rob Enslin, Kirsten, Janet, Phil. I mean, every conversation I have with them, um, I, I take away two or three things that I learn that are that are new um, and. You know, I, I hope I contribute back to the team in the same sort of way. So I think that's really the, the perspective is just falling in love with impermanence, making that part of the way you practice. It actually helps us move faster. You know, if we held on to, it's one of the things I love about Google. We don't just keep doing things because we uh, thought they were good ideas at one point. We, we will constantly look at you know, what's working, how can we pour more energy into that? Um, and so that's a really positive thing. It helps us move much faster. We can constantly tune the engine, make adjustments, make changes, you know, and, and uh, move forward, I think, more quickly than the competition. Now, I think culturally, that's why we felt so aligned with Google, because like we have the benefit of being a non-publicly traded company who's small. We can pivot and move all the time. I think us also having this concept of 
Uh, you know, no sacred cows, no egos. We shift when we need to. But to have a partner that also operates that way is is uh, super, I think, uh, conducive to the to the bigger mission, right? Of impacting customers, driving markets, transforming industries. Um, and I think it certainly feels like it's helped having uh, uh, Rob, TK, Kirsten, Janet, so on and so forth, Carolee, come from places where the partner ecosystem was so important. Healthy partners were so critical. It was not a nice to have. It was not a something we did to put it on our website that we, you know, SAP has partners. We just have to say that. No, it's like they actually did and they drove a lot of value, but it requires a certain orientation from the big vendor to enable, empower, develop, um, develop the ecosystem. And there's a playbook that uh, prior to kind of you arriving and, and of course, Carol Lee and the leadership team that it felt like Google felt, you know, Google believed that it had to be invented in Sunnyvale or Mountain View for it to be a valid strategy. And I think we appreciate all the things that Google does differently than others in the partner realm. But there's also key elements that are just facts that you have to have table stakes, comp neutrality, funding mechanisms, MDF, PIP, etc. And I think um, prior to the recent era, again, we've been partnering with Google for 14 years now, we've seen incarnations of the programs that didn't always align with what is the truth sort of on the ground to be in our shoes. Yeah, so I, I, I can only speak for my time here, uh, but the what, I, what I've seen and you know what I talk to my team about all the time is if I look over the arc of my career, the best sellers uh, who have had the most successful careers have been the ones that surrounded themselves with a coalition of allied, you know, uh, allied folks, both internal and you know, external in terms of partners. But if I look at the, the sellers who have done the best, it's because A, they really care about their customer's business. They get fully engaged, you know, so much so that they're invited right, right to the table. Um, and they also don't do it alone. They come at it with a stable of internal and, and partner resources that help them scale, move, not just move faster, but um, as they're moving through a problem set, they're bringing the subject matter experts that can really lay down uh, all of the, the goodness um, that shows value. And so I mean, we certainly see that with you and, and with many of our other partners in terms of, you know, we, we see a big positive arc in terms of the impact of the customer when we engage and when we bring uh, folks like you into the mix. The pressure we feel is to show up as well as Google does in the sales process, to show up as well as Google PSO does in the technical implementation process, to be as easy to contract with and buy from as Google is. Like that is the, the parity that we, we, we always work to create because bringing partners in, especially to the largest of enterprises, but really to any company, should never feel to the customer that they're getting the B team or they're getting something lesser than, you know? And I think if, if, if we do our job in, in showing up that way consistently in every geography that we, uh, have a role in, I think it makes, it lowers the barrier of entry of, of, of your top sellers wanting us in the room, like adding value at a very high enterprise level is super important to us. And I think probably to all key partners as well. Yeah, I think certainly customers see the biggest impact when, and, and this goes back to you know the role that my team plays as well. Customers see the biggest impact when they get uh, a, a consistent level of engagement and and uh, experience and and uh, delivery expertise. You know, it's one of the reasons why our our PSO team, so our professional services team much of what they actually do is create content and, and create enablement for our partners uh, because they view that as really the scale engine that can help us reach more customers uh, for, for longer duration than if we built 
uh, a, a large internal consultancy. And so that's a key piece. That's a that's a deliberate design of our go to market. It, it's I think it's a differentiator from the competition in terms of really uh, aiming toward a partner centric go to market when it comes to delivery. Um, and we certainly see we have so many examples of of success and, and we're aiming for uh, increasing that exponentially. What's what's really fantastic to see is the evolution of how Google talks about partners. Um, and I think there was years and there's a bunch of restructuring that has occurred, I think, to support this even further. But there was years where we felt like we were out, you know, the channel program, the channel organization and partners were something other than the core line of business. There were other than the go to market strategy. It was like, there's a go to market strategy. And by the way, there's partners. <laughs> but now you hear TK like on CNBC and he, he talks about partners. Rob says, we're going to have partners that accelerate. Otherwise, I'm not coming. Like all this stuff. And we hear um, the field uh, leadership, even in some of the most successful regions across the across the U.S., where they have, it may be in the past, led a very direct strategy or realizing that, wow, well, partners are better. Their capabilities have matured. We actually need them to hit our numbers and to satisfy customers, not just during the sales pro sale process, but for years to come. And that, that level of alignment top down to the field, it's, it's almost like, like we used to go out and, and sell the case for not just SADA, but for partners. Like this is why partners are important. And now when we go and have these meetings, that's a talk track that actually Googlers are um, talk, you know, saying back to us. And I feel like, wow, that is progress, Eric. I don't have to sell on the, on the of validity of why partners are important anymore. And, and that's a huge load off because then we can really focus on what's really important, which is forecast, pipeline, revenue, strategy, customers, customers, customers. And I think it's, it's been a huge shift, especially in the last year. Yeah, if you look, you know, specifically in North America, if you look at the the region that's in my area of responsibility, um, so the, the leaders that I'm working with, um, so I, I report directly to Kirsten Cliphouse, who leads our North America business, and the team that I'm leading, um, I, we feel very integrated into the core go to market, um, and so you know, every conversation I have with Kirsten. Uh, Janet Kennedy, who's running our all, all of our uh, geographic uh, accounts in North America. Phil Moyer, who's running our uh, our industry accounts, um, the, the industry accounts that uh, that his team is leading. You know, the conversations are um, extremely partner integrated, and it's not something that I have to push. They are they have a vision of what success looks like based on experience having done it before successfully yeah that that little shift to put the partner orgs both partner development and partner sales in geography that was such sim a symbolic shift but also really a, a shift that promotes a new level of execution like all we ever wanted was as, as as sato or all partners really want is to feel like an extension of janet's team or an extension of kirsten's team like we're just part of your sales and go-to-market organization. We just happen to not work for Google <laughs> directly, but like we, especially partners like Sada, like we actually feel like we do work <laughs> for and with Google anyway. Um, but to be structured as 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 to be in geography in market versus being some other thing that rolls up globally, right? Um, I feel like we can go in and 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 sort of carry a number. Even actually, that's part of our plan. Like. Not only a Janus level for U.S. and Canada, which is where we focus, but in every geography we can go to Oliver or Michael or Jim and say, look, you can depend on SADA for X percent of contribution to your overall number. And I think that is a very powerful posture. And I think all the restructuring has really supported that very, very well. Part of the evolution that, that happened this year for your team particularly is that this concept of partner development. Um, which is different than partner sales, but partner development is, is a difficult thing to get right. And we've seen, you know, our other partner evolve and go through different strategies. And, 
uh, having great partner development managers. I think it's a rare collection of traits and qualities and experiences that make someone a great uh, PDM. Um, and I think there, there's sort of part of that is because partners are themselves in a different state of maturity or a different state. Their needs are completely different, right? And and there's two things you're trying to do simultaneously, at least two. One is find, grow, and nurture uh, new partners because new partners are needed all the time. Like if if you're not doing that, that's not you know fulfilling what the future needs of the market may be. And then there's sort of managing the uh, partners that are further along in their journey, and those jobs are different. Those PDMs. But, you know, skill sets are different. Can you talk about some of that um, structure that's been introduced into twenty in twenty twenty to support all sorts of partners you have in your uh, under management? Yeah. So as I shared with our our mutual friend Vince Menzion in a, in a podcast I did with him, I must have been a year and a half, two years ago. But I'm a big practitioner of mindfulness um, and you know, getting present and staying present. And so as we thought about org structure uh, for for this year and and, uh, really moving forward, one of the things we thought about was, what do we need right now? Um, As we're in this uh, phase where we're we're rapidly scaling. Um, So a couple of things. One, we need uh, very senior channel leaders embedded in our field operation. And and you've seen some of the hires that we've made there with Nirav Sheth coming over from Cisco in the West and with Rob Harper, uh, who's leading our channel sales in the East. And and we're continuing to to build out um, folks in those roles in the subregions to make sure that we have, you know, for each subregion leader, we have a a very experienced channel leader who can guide and and lead the, the channel sales team in that region, really trying to get into the account planning process, find, you know, who are the partners that we need within certain accounts and uh, then how do we stay really agile and bring the right partners to the right opportunities? What campaigns do we run in each, uh, in each sub-region or nationally um, so that we can you know, reach customers with timely, very relevant offers that, that really are, are delivered through partners? Um, so we made that decision to put those leaders in place for the partner development managers, um, we actually formed a national team, which is the team that I'm leading. And yeah, the reasons behind that, so A, you know, most of our partners in North America don't want to just stay in one subregion. They want to really work across uh, all of North America, if not wider. And so we want the way, we want the, the PDM to be mapped to the aspiration of the partners. And you know, we also want to be able to measure the PDM based on the aspiration of the partners. Uh, so we, we made that change. Um, I also have a few different teams within my team. Uh, so I have a team that's focused on working with partners that are earlier in their journey with Google. Um, and there's a certain set of needs around that. So really activating those partnerships, you know, going through the process of building the practice, um, establishing the first few proof points, and then scaling up from there. And then I have another team that's focused on working with partners that are fairly mature in their co-sell with us um, and have a different set of needs. They're they're more uh, in the sales acceleration area. Um, And I have a team that is working with uh, global consulting partners as well who have a different set of needs altogether based on the the way their orgs are structured, the base uh, based on their engagement model. Uh, so, you know, when I got here three and a half years ago, we didn't have these different lenses for looking at partners and meeting them where they are. Uh, we, we were literally just, you know, uh, engaging with all partners of all types and meeting them with where where uh, where Google was at that point in time. Uh, so I think we've really come a long way and, and hopefully your team is seeing that in the impact on the ground with our, uh, with not just with our, with your PDM, but really in the way that you engage with our teams at scale. No, I, it's, it's been a huge shift uh, for our PDM as well. Like for our PDM to manage, you know, multiple partners who are all in each, you know, different uh, stages of their evolution or their Google partnership, I could only you know, imagine the kind of, um thrashing that has to happen i think just mentally 
to go and, you know, do something with Sada versus someone who's just getting started. I think that has helped tremendously. And also the size of the team. We have someone in support for, for us as partners. We have someone in operations on your Google site to support us. We have a, a you know partner engineering. We have marketing. So it used to be like one person who was the bottleneck and the quarterback for all needs, literally from a technical ticket escalation to uh, the next conference, like one person, right? Versus now it's like, a whole team and we feel like it, it's really it really suits us well and structurally and being bit in market but also having this team that supports us from google be measured on our overall achievements it just creates a kind of incentive alignment that um allows us to go fast and i think that's you know that, that's super important we're, we're always looking to evolve partners i think have to keep up with what google's doing what the market is asking of us what do you wish that partners did more of? I would say one of the things that we are always working to do is reach customers at scale. We have a variety of ways of doing that. You know, we have our own marketing engine. Uh, partners have their own marketing engines. Uh, we are looking to really find ways to get more I'll call it origination happening um, in terms of, you know, can we reach even more customers? I, you know, going all the way back to why did I, why did I join this place? Um, so I joined because I thought the technology was phenomenal. Um, I stay here for the people that I get to work with. So, you know, what drew me in um, is still what keeps me excited, but what really keeps me here and what I think will keep me here uh, long-term is just the amazing people that I get to work with. Um, yeah, the area that, one of the areas that I'm working on is how do we, how do we really share that with more customers? And so to the extent that we can together reach even a broader audience um, and and you've been you've been really great about uh, using creative ways of getting your message out there i mean this this uh, podcast is one of many things that that you personally do to to lead in that way um, but you know to the extent we can broaden our reach even further what i see is when we're actually in a conversation with a customer we tend to progress really well and win um, where we have not been historically winning is where we haven't been playing, you know, where we have not been engaged in the account. And so my goal is to you know, year over year increase the amount of, uh, of deals that we're in, tables that we're at. Um, and we hope that you, know, you and, and many of our other partners are right there with us in terms of uh, getting to more engagement points with customers so they can see the value. As you said earlier, I think, you know, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> we do want to be at the table more more often because we, we do believe uh, the transformational potential of the technology. Like when we're talking to customers, yeah, I mean, you have to have some element of, you know, sales acumen, sales ability, sales process, but, uh, and not to sound overly uh, confident, but. I think it's it's a it's a great service that we're doing, educating the, the the customers around the capabilities and the possibilities of what it is to go on this journey with GCP or or with G Suite or Cloud Search or Chrome or Maps, etc. I think you know we want our customers to make the most well informed possible. Uh, we want our customers to make the most well informed decision possible, and so if we're in there having those conversations, doing POCs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think we're we're doing that. That's part of our job. And I think we're just part of the reason we're so excited is because we just see the impact that we can have, the trans transformational impact on companies, on IT organizations, on lines of business. And I love being at the, at the table talking about those things and allowing customers to explore that with us in partnership with Google. The other thing is, so, so, so originating opportunity, very, very important. The other thing is uh, we made a shift as you may know, of where, you know, being measured on just or origination was interesting. And it's something that we, we did very well in, but um, higher quality origination of opportunities, better qualification so that our conversion rates are higher. I think delivering yeah. pipeline to east, west, central, south, 
Canada is great, but again, for us to be able to go to Jim Lamb and say, like, we originated and closed this much business and market is way more powerful than said, you know, saying we just created this much pipeline. And we actually did some things because I'm a big believer in incentive alignment, as are you. I know that. Um, we, we made some shifts in how we, we measure our, our own inside sales organization, marketing organization with, with regards to those desired outcomes. Cause even though Google's tripling the field and all of these things, we're doubling and tripling the field to, to match. Um, there's still the need to reach customers is still extremely, extremely important. Completely agree with you on those points, particularly increasing the conversion rate, because ultimately if you're converting, then the customer is seeing value and you, you've, you've really uh, supported the customer through a journey that is delivering value to them and you know, to their organization and to their customers at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you, I, I think one of the differentiators here, um, you, know, you asked me early on what drew me to Google. One of the things I uh, knew was true here, but have definitely observed uh, over my time is how people support each other. Uh, and so hopefully you see this in the way our team shows up. Um, and and, and you know, we see it in the way that you show up with customers as well. It's You're not there to accomplish a transaction. You're actually you're there to really care about their mission, um, care about what they're trying to accomplish and work through something that delivers value for them. Um, and hopefully you see that in the way our team shows up in working with you as well in terms of you know really caring about your business, getting to know what will move the needle, um, really focusing on where there are friction points, actively taking feedback from you and taking that seriously and making it uh, part of you know the, the mission that we have to continuously improve as well. Uh, I think cloud and cloud economics really, necessitates that kind of engagement that is far more concerned about what happens after the sale than getting the sale done because none of us are going to be successful if we cannot prove impact and outcomes to customers i mean it's a subscription it is a consumption contract and even if there's a pre-commit of some kind because you've done a good job getting a customer to commit to multi-year engagement on the gcp side if the customer is not ramping meaning they're not uh, uh, seeing value and doing more on the platform. Nobody wants to have that awkward conversation three years from now that said, hey, you committed to X, but you used Y. Like that is a terrible position to be in. And I think actually one of the key areas in which we, we definitely help Google scale is we have so many structures and infrastructure elements in place for what happens after the sale. And yes, we have to, be upfront, help sell, help close, help contract. But, you know, from customer success teams to technical account management teams to uh, client partner teams to enterprise support, like, and I love that because it's very different than the old software sales model or the hardware sales model. We used to ship stuff and, and you were done. The revenue was recognized, your sellers got paid, and you may talk to that customer in three years when it's time to renew. This is impossible now in this uh, journey. And you and I both know how much software in the world has been bought that has never, ever been deployed. So much, right? Billions of dollars. And I think now it's a very, very different world where when a customer buys something, of course, they're going to deploy it. And of course, they're going to see value because we're all going to make sure that that happens. Yeah, it's, it's super important to make sure that we are... Uh, you know, articulating what the value is and then delivering upon it quickly um, and then learning and tuning and, you know, and uh, delivering even better. <laughs> so that's a key piece. Yeah. What I do love about the ecosystem amongst many things is that how much it actually forces us to change and evolve all the time. That's what keeps it exciting. We're learning all the time and there's a feedback loop so that next time we show up a little different um, and we're super excited to partner with you particularly in your teams, but also with Google Cloud. I really want to thank you for all the support that you've given us. And uh, I, I say this as a joke, but I know that it's true. You know, partners like us can be high maintenance. <laughs> but 
but I want to thank you for 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 tolerating that and supporting that. And I will call it actively engaged. <laughs> actively engaged. We could not be more excited about 22, uh, 2020 and beyond, Eric. So thank you for all all that you do, and thank you for for being on Cloud and Clear. Can I close with um, one of my favorite mindfulness exercises? Let's do it. Go ahead and make a fist, a really tight fist with one hand. And then use your other hand to try and pry it open. Okay. Can't do it. And then, then release. Okay. Sh shake, shake out your hands a little bit. All right. Now make a really tight fist again. And put your hand underneath and, and support that hand. And watch how it just opens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the, the idea there is that um, you, know, you can engage really heavily, but unless you're supporting, um, you're, you're not making progress. And so what, what we hope to do is be that supportive structure for your business as we partner together. And by extension, you know, we're mutually supporting our customers through all the things they're trying to get done. Absolutely. That's a great thing to end on. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Tony. Thank you for listening to Cloud and Clear. Check the show notes for links to this week's topics. And don't forget to connect with us on Twitter at Cloud and Clear and our website, sada.com. Be sure to rate and review the show on your favorite podcast app.